I warmly welcome you to Serendib Aquatics. In this video, I mainly focus on the one of a most beautiful whiptail catfish variety in aquarium hobby. It is very beautiful and calm fish variety, which are good for planted aquariums. In this video, you will go through my breeding project of red lizard whiptail catfish. I have colony of two juveniles, two adult females and two adult males. Adults are from three different bloodlines. Juveniles are from another bloodline. We will go through all details now. Whiptail catfish are very beautiful and unique variant of pet fish, which are popular in planted aquarium hobby. The red lizard whiptail catfish, one of the smallest whiptail catfish, who have rufous body color. This amazing whiptail catfish, scientifically named as Rena loricaria species L010A. This amazing small specimen's natural habitat is unclear according to the history. They are adaptable omnivores. These fish will eat most foods from cucumber or zucchini slices to frozen bloodworm or dry flake foods, algae, and decapsulated artemia. They are usually peaceful and non-territorial in community setups, but in the breeding season, the alpha male will dominate the most possible cave and surrounding area which is suitable for spawning. At that time, male will show aggressive behavior toward the other males. Average length of an adult fish in an aquarium setup is variable around 4.5 inches to 6 inches from tail to tip of the snout. When we consider the sex determination of this fish, it is very difficult to do until they reach the breeding plumage. It will take roughly around 1.5 to 2 years from the birth. The male has a wider, rounder snout, whereas the female is finer and more pointed. At maturity of the male fish, you will see a growth of odontodes, both sides of cheeks and a frontal part of the head. It can clearly visible in alpha male. The male body is slimmer, whereas the female has more curves and a fuller abdomen area. Looking at the bottom fins to the anus, the male will show a bit of a V-shape there and actually does have a tiny pointed breeding tube. The female, in contrast, has a more rounded half moon shape there with a rounded knob breeding tube. When we talk about the breeding of this amazing red lizard whiptail catfish, it have much more unclear parts. I'll try to share the knowledge that I earn with my experience and research. They are easy to keep, breed, and do well in a community tank as long as there are species that are not too aggressive kept alongside them. Well, established aquarium setup with regular temperature around 26 to 29 Celsius with dimmed lights and a good amount of hiding places make much more natural environment for this amazing fish. Plants, driftwood, rocks, Artificial caves are ideal for this catfish as hiding places. For a breeding group of 5 to 7 adults in a 120 inches into 18 inches into 18 inches, aquarium is better suitable. Better to have pH around 6.5 to 7.5. Below 6 and above 8 they will not doing well. When you are trying to breed this fish, it is better to select 2 inch size small fish from different bloodlines and raise them until be adults. That mixing of several bloodlines will give you a good result in F1 generation. In natural habitats, usually consist with basal substrates. Therefore, then a bare bottom pudding a substrate is good. Substrate should be sand or smoothened gravel. Sharp, jagged gravel can damage the mouth parts or the underside of the fish. Typical for South American catfish, this species does best in soft, slightly acidic to neutral water, good oxygenation, and a good amount of water currents. It can however adapt to harder, more alkaline water, and may even reproduce under these conditions. Provide caves or pipework where the females will lay their eggs. When consider the breeding of this amazing whiptail catfish, they are preferred to be spawning in both side open narrow caves, which have diameter nearly 1 inch in size and length nearly of 7 to 8 inches. We can use clay caves, seasoned bamboo caves, or PVC pipes for this. Not only in both side open caves, they also breed in one side closed caves. Most of the time they are laying eggs on horizontal surfaces. In my case, I never come across with vertical surface spawning incidences. When we consider the behavior of spawning, it starts by the male fish. Initially, most dominant males select the best place for the spawning and start to clean it with his mouth. 
the female who is going to spawn with him, usually time to time hanging around that area. Following one to two days of cleaning by the male, the selected female enter into the cave, and after that time, she also starts to clean the cave with male together. This behavior is very unique and nice to see. When they start that behavior, they will stop the feeding most of the time. At that time, male and female shows aggressive behavior towards the other fish, those who will try to disturb them. If there is some disturb happen, or if they get frightened at the moment, they will fight for keep the place safe, and if the disturbance is unbearable, they will leave the cave. But if the threat is not persist, they will come again to the same place and start to clean the place again. Following two to three days of cleaning by both of them, female fish lays eggs. Usually this will occur at the dawn. Initial spawn usually contains of 20 to 30 eggs, and they are greenish yellow in color. In further spawns, egg number will be increased up to 60 or more at a time. In captive breeding setups, we can trigger the spawning by imitate a rainy season by doing massive water change, reduce temperature, and reduce the TDS value of water. This manual methods can trigger the spawning of red lizard catfish. I usually do 80% water change and reduce TDS up to 120 with RO water and reduce the temperature up to 26 Celsius by using external aquarium fans. When mature male and gravid female available in the tank, you should do these triggering procedure at the early morning or at Dewan. Following water change, the males start to select a breeding place and above spawning steps followed by both of them. One mature female will lay eggs once a month up to three times per year, or will change with nutritional status and environmental changes of the tank. The male takes over the guarding of the eggs and they hatch, depending on water temperature, in between six to eight days time, and will hang with a large yolk sac onto the aquarium glass. They will use up their yolk sac in about three days, and then the male can be removed from the cave if you want. Some males are eating their eggs as a habit. At that point, you should take a decision about that male. You can remove that male from that tank, and one of other male will be take place of alpha. Or else you can take the cave after give a adequate time to fertilize the eggs with male's sperms. Then you should maintain a good water flow through the eggs and make a slightly high temperature nearly 28 Celsius. That raised temperature and good water flow through eggs will fulfill the requirement of hatching proscess. If you have a season snails and planaria in your tank, they will eat the eggs at the night. Please keep it in your mind. Feeding can be with Artemia dot spirulina powder in first five days following yolk sac absorb and other crustacea such as frozen cyclops in their later stages. The frequent feeding with crustacea will enhance the red coloration of the fish. Keep in mind if you overfeed the fish regularly, it will end up with bloating and ultimate death. Therefore, small amount mixed synthetic diet twice a day is better for maintain healthy adult fish. Usual amount is 5% from body weight of the fish per one feed. I do know they are very nitrate sensitive and high nitrate levels make them very sick or even kill them. So always keep those water changes up to scratch. pH is always seven and even sinking down to six sometimes due to the driftwood in my tank. Temperature hang around 26 Celsius to 29 Celsius. Food is usually algae wafer, massivore, tetrabytes, and decapsulated brine shrimp. Somehow initial stage of life, they are loving to eat various types of algae. Thus use a mature well-old tank with heavy algae growth. In there, the growth rate of the fries get increased. My tank is a 120 inch into 15 inches into 15 inches in size. For filtration, I have canister filter, which can filter up to 2000 liters per minute. There are numerous pieces of wood and plants for the whiptails to hang out on. Here you can see adult male fish in left side and adult female in right side. Usually the first spawn eggs get infertile due to various reasons. In further cases, may be successful with experience of the male and female fish. Gravid female will lay nearly 30 to 50 eggs at a time. Eggs are yellowish green, nearly 1.5 mm size. Those are sticked onto the surface of the cave. Following the spawning season, female leaves the cave and male will look after the eggs until it hatch. He will fan the eggs to prevent eggs get infect from fungus and that fanning also will cause to maintain a good temperature and good flow around the eggs. 
The eggs take anywhere from six to eight days to hatch depending on water conditions. They take at least two to three days to absorb the yolk sac of the egg. Then they should find food their own. You can feed them spirulina powder, diatom, or a mix of agar and spirulina powder, and frozen till required. Following initial one-week life of Fry's best thing is put them into a tank which have much more algae and diatoms. Before put, please do the correct acclimatization to the new water. At about three months, they will reach 1.5 to 2 inch with good feeding. This is the whole story behind breeding and keeping red lizard whiptail catfish in successful manner. This will help you to make a good colony of red lizard catfish. Thank you for joining with Serendib Aquatics. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to comment below. I'll try to reply to all comments. You can share your knowledge with others about red lizard whiptail catfish. Put your experience as a comment below. Serendib Aquatics will see you in our next fish breeding video as soon as possible. Hang on with Serendib Aquatics. If you think this will help you for your aquarium journey, please be kind to subscribe Serendib Aquatic YouTube channel for new updates.